The only thing we know so far, ladies and gentlemen, is that this is a rational expression. We have a polynomial over another polynomial. All right? Now, what I can do, though, is I do notice that this is like really division. And we know that we can divide polynomials, right? We just did that last chapter. So why don't, like, why don't we try to divide? It's like the same thing. If I had like y was equal to 12x over 3x, that could be, that could be simplified, right? And don't you think the simplified answer would be a little bit easier to graph than that answer or that problem, right? So why don't we try to graph this? Or why don't we try to divide this, see if we can get a simplified answer? So I'm just going to take x plus 2 divided into x plus 3. x divides into x one time. 1 times x is x. 1 times 2 is positive 2. Now remember, a lot of people are making mistakes last class period. They weren't using parentheses and subtracting the rows. x minus x is 0. 3 minus 2 is 1. Does x divide into 1? No, so that is your remainder. Now, does anybody remember how we write our remainders, basically? Yeah? One over the, or whatever your remainder is over the divisor. Right, you write it over your divisor. And let's just make sense of that again. Like, 3 divides into 8. 3 divides into 8 two times. 2 times 3 is 6. That gives you 2. That is your remainder, right? So it's 2 plus 2 thirds. So if you guys were to write that, if you were to write that as a so basically what you do is you take the remainder plus your divisor. Because if you were to multiply 3 times 2 and 2 thirds, guess what you'd get? 8. Don't believe me? Convert that to a mixed, convert that to an improper fraction. That's going to be 6. That's going to be 8 thirds. There. A little bit of fraction review. Don't worry about it. If you just want to memorize what Eli said, then that's fine. I'll go back to it. Just take your remainder over your divisor. So this is equal to 1 plus 1 over x plus 2. Is that now in a form that we're a little bit more familiar with? Yes. yes. So I have y is equal to, I'm going to write the 1 afterwards, 1 over x plus 2 plus 1. Now, guys, I see that I have a shift left 2. So I can say my vertical asymptote is x equals negative 2. And please, guys, don't wait till after the bell, OK? I'll, I'll finish this really quickly. My horizontal asymptote, if it's at originally at 0 for the reciprocal function, now it's being shifted up 1, so it's y is equal to 1. x-intercept, now here's where it gets interesting. Do not try to find the x and y-intercept with this function. Plug it into here. The best and easiest way to do it is with your original rational function. Okay? And I'll show you why after lunch. But the x-intercept is when y is equal to 0. Guys, if I need to get this x off the bottom, I multiply by an x plus 2 on both sides, right? That goes to 0 equals x plus 3. Can I now easily solve this for x? Yeah. x is equal to negative 3. For my y-intercept, I have y is equal to 0 plus 3 over 0 plus 2, which is y is equal to 3 halves. If you try to do that exact same way, if you guys remember from what we did last round, plugging in x and solving for y or plugging in 0 for y and solving for x, it was, it was more complicated than this. right? So it's nice to use this equation for our x and y intercepts, but this is preferred to find our asymptotes and to graph it. Okay? So it's just helpful to go and just understand that those two equations are similar to one another.